All right, we're going to go ahead and get this kicked off here. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Welcome to the webinar. My name is Chris Longo. I'm Head of Sales and Marketing for AOPEN. Thanks for joining the Thermal Imaging Kiosk Solutions for Enterprise and Education. Uh, this is a webinar that mostly covers the details, not only of the thermal camera solutions, but it also focuses on how AOPEN integrates with partner solutions. So one of the solutions with us today is actually, uh, we have a groundbreaking partner, 22 Miles. They're also going to be on the webinar to kind of discuss their journey with AOPEN. Few housekeeping things that I wanted to cover just before we get started. If you have any questions whatsoever during the presentation, please feel free to send them through the chat function and our panelists will be able to get the questions. At the end, if there's time, we'll be able to answer some of the questions. If not, um, we will email you and get responses out to you as soon as possible. There is also going to be an on-demand recording. Uh, we'll send out the link with the slide deck as well. So as soon as it's done, everybody that participated, we will be sending the deck to you. So for now, let's go ahead and turn this presentation over to Miles Schofield. Thanks, Chris. All right, let's get started. All right, um, my name is Miles Schofield. I'm a technical solutions engineer for AOPEN America. Um, thanks for joining us today. Um, uh, you just heard from Chris Longo, um, our sales executive. And as he mentioned, uh, we're very pleased to have um, Tom Mann um, from 22 Miles, EVP, VP of um, Sales and Marketing for 22 Miles with us here today. So what are we talking about today? So um, the agenda is that we're going to review um, basically thermal imaging technologies just very quickly. Uh, in the last presentation where we uh, analyzed more uh, faster sort of walkthrough types of thermal imaging solutions, I gave a deeper dive into the technology, talking about IFOV, uh, how the sensors worked a little bit. So if you're more curious about how the technology works um, from a base layer, please go back and check that out. All the VODs are available. So just a quick refresh. Um, then the next thing we're going to cover uh, is the release of our new AOPEN Thermal Kiosk module. This is just a straight module. It's not an entire solution. It's designed for specifically our um, kiosk partners uh, in the United States. Um, so we're going to have a quick talk about that, features, all that stuff. Um, then, of course, uh, the next thing is to really focus on how these thermal imaging uh, types of kiosks are being used. What features are important? What value adds? Are, are, they, are they getting uh, what makes the uh, enterprise um, solutions, you know, worth that much more money uh, to, uh, um, to the end customer? And of course, then we're going to get all the great um, feedback from 22 Miles on where they've been finding success, particularly uh, in the U.S. market. All right, so let's get started. So uh, if you're not familiar um, with this technology yet, the main idea of what we're trying to achieve uh, is basically to detect if someone entering a, a, a building has a fever, right? Um, now these systems, there's a few things to note about them, uh, is that number one, they sort of assume that um, your forehead is an accurate representation of your temperature. It's of course not the best way, right? Uh, um, but it's, an, it's sort of an easy way to get a rough approximation of, of your temperature. So that's what these cameras are really looking for, is they're trying to see your forehead, right? Um, the second thing is that they're not really medical devices. Yes, they can be extremely accurate, but uh, once again, there's price and performance, right? If you're just trying to look for fever and give you an okay idea of where people are at, you, you, you can use a cheaper system and then uh, you're always gonna verify with the secondary action. So these systems typically flag either the walk-by or the kiosk ones will flag you and then they'll usually confirm with some sort of medical device, either a contact or non-contact uh, thermometer. So you, normally, you know, you're gonna save some money on these type of systems. You verify with a much um, cheaper, uh, uh, higher sensitivity device, such as a, 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 a direct contact thermometer. And once again, they're not designed to be um, a catch-all, right? Obviously a fever is only one indicator of being sick. So of course, if you're, asymptomatic, this is not going to catch you, or, or this is not going to uh, catch an asymptomatic person, but this is one of those layers of protection that have been become 
uh, very effective in uh, responding to these types of uh, issues in the workplace. So in the last, in the last webinar uh, on thermal imaging that we talked about was really about um, the values of using a walk-by system, right? These are, uh, these are systems where you can just walk by, you don't have to stop, you don't have to look at anything. And today we're specifically talking about kiosks. Um, and so why would you want to use a kiosk when you would want to use a kiosk? And it's really about all that added value and that clarity, right? Clarity of what the system's doing and, uh, and the primary added value that, you know, you can think about in terms of these kiosks and why we're here today is, you know, do they need access control layers? You know, it, is it an additional, do you need to work with uh, security SIs or the security systems of these, um, these companies that you're working with? Of course, you can add corporate communication. We're gonna talk about that a bit because you might as well, if you're gonna put a kiosk somewhere, you know, do two birds with one stone. Uh, and of course, the, 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 the two primary new uh, building 2.0 right? The entrance tracking and the employee tracking, right? Who's using what entrance, how often, how long, what space are they using, uh, who's coming in, how many visitors are coming in, did the visitor go to the right location? All these sort of things are available um, to you once you have sort of a kiosk in place um, at your entrances. So that's what we're really going to be um, talking about is the value of these type of solutions. So the first thing, uh, the next thing on the agenda is to talk about uh, the AOPEN Thermal Imaging Kiosk module. So this is a new module, uh, as I mentioned, that we're releasing specifically for AOPEN's kiosk um, partners. Uh, the primary, uh, so basically it's a thermal Im uh, imaging kiosk module only, which means that it only has the thermal CCD in there. It does not have a regular camera in there as well, right? And uh, the whole idea behind this is to have just a really easy to integrate module for kiosk providers. Um, and the key, the number one uh, feature is, is that it has a very high frame rate, easy to mount, um, as built-in algorithm for calibration, uh, which makes it a little bit lighter uh, on, the, on the processor and the device you're using. Uh, but the biggest feature is it's all built um, for USB over power and data. So it's very easy to connect. So you can just uh, really just put it into your kiosk, as long as you have a free USB on your primary controller, uh, it should be extremely easy to add to an existing kiosk design. So um, to break it down with a little bit more specs, um, is obviously once you get into these um, lower end types of cameras, right? Because as we discussed last in the last webinar, when you have someone stand at a kiosk, you're gonna get them for a little bit more. When someone's walking by one of these systems, you only have about a half second, which means that you need something that can accurately measure someone, uh, someone's temperature just in that half second as they walk by. However, when you're at a kiosk, they're gonna stand still for at least a little bit. Um, and so, um, uh, so a lot of these systems are a little bit slower, but they're, they're, uh, they're still very accurate, right? So primary ones, no shutter design, so you have continuous analysis. Um, 0.9 degrees Fahrenheit accuracy, 0.5, that's pretty much the standard for the more expensive systems, uh, wide FOV, uh, and of course the main feature of this camera, uh, camera is that it's, it's a lot faster than other products at this price point. So a lot of other pro products at this price point are about seven or nine hertz. Um, of course, the no shutter, dynamic point tracking, right? It can track uh, the heat sources as they move across the frame in front of the kiosk and they sort of shift around and it does have in the controller uh, available mass settings. Um, it doesn't have a pretty interface. They're all controlled by uh, APIs that you can integrate. And of course, uh, this is a modern solution that supports WebSocket APIs uh, as well to integrate with your existing uh, solution. So um, the, the one of the other things I wanted to point out about this uh, particular product that we're releasing is that um, we have a render that we did for one of our um, Taiwanese customers about how you would, just an example of how you would integrate uh, this particular camera uh, with one of our AOPEN eTile all-in-one devices. So you can see that AOPEN also has the ability to manufacture little cages and mounting, uh, mounting configurations. The two white bars are LEDs, so you can have direct LED uh, indicators on the front of the device. Uh, the dual camera is of course um, there because this particular customer wanted the regular visual cameras as well for the facial recognition. So this is a, both a facial recognition and a, um, a thermal a fever detection system as well. 
All right, so let's talk about some of the use cases that we've seen uh, for these types of products, uh, where they're being used and what are the key, um, the key features and value adds. So the first one uh, I wanted to point out was a uh, Taiwanese solution. So all these, all these solutions I'm talking about now are strictly um, outside the US. And then of course we have 22 miles coming in with uh, the primary US um, experience around these types of solutions. So I'm just trying to frame things a little bit um, from uh, our other regions uh, experience. And then uh, Tomer will come in because uh, he's, he's pretty much the expert on these types of solutions um, in the United States uh, right now. So, um, so let's talk about the first one, uh, the first use case, healthcare. So the whole idea of, you know, with these fever detection types of spaces is that, is that obviously when you have a healthcare situation, there's a lot of sensitive people uh, inside. So uh, this is a veterans hospital in addition to postpartum nursing care center. And the, the real key um, interesting facts about this use case um, was the unattended versus attended, right? Um, Obviously, the fever detection and the facial recognition uh, is there to protect um, uh, the sensitive people inside. Uh, but what I found interesting about this solution is that it allows visitors to pre-register because uh, this can be an attended or unattended solution, uh, which means that if there's not someone there watching the door and you're a visitor and you want to come, then uh, you can show up, uh, register online, show up, it confirms that you don't have a fever and that will let, actually let you in, right? Uh, the other thing is that um, that's often built into these systems is uh, the intercom. It's a very standard part of a lot of security systems, right? So once again, if it is unattended and you're a visitor who hasn't registered or some, something, so you can use these systems at intercoms as well uh, to call people to the particular entrance. So it's basically a seam, uh, a, like a streamlined entranceway controller in this particular space. So the second um, type of solution that um, I like to uh, use case that I'd like to talk about is uh, sort of factory worker as a, or industrial. So we know that in the in the U.S. that this has been one of the key um, key types of solutions. However, they've all been in-house, as we know, uh, places like uh, GM and Amazon and other types of large manufacturers have put these in in their manufacturing plants. Uh, but they're probably using their own in-house solution. So what are the values of these types of uh, kiosk solutions in this particular vertical? Uh, well, for this one, this is a, a manufacturing place, once again, in the APAC region. And this one was much more slanted towards um, the employee monitoring and employee control, right? So this allows, um, you know, employees to quickly, easily, uh, you can see that there's no door control in this particular application. So they're all just walking in really quick. They just stop at the kiosk, move on. And so it acts as um, the time clock, of course, gives you the fever detection, uh, also alerts management. So <clears throat> it's, it can uh, send SMSs or emails to, it has an, a whole alert system um, that uh, can message managers or upper management uh, to the status of, you know, how many people are at work, how many people are missing, what's the status of X, Y, and Z employee. So once again, the, the, the whole overall value is basically entrance control, um, advanced entrance control for these type of uh, systems. Then as I mentioned before, <clears throat> of course, corporate communication is once again, you're gonna have people walk by, look at this kiosk every day to check in effectively. You might as well put uh, anything that you need to communicate, uh, any sort of uh, events, times, um, any sort of changes, uh, you know, any of that stuff, of course, typical corporate communication use cases you can add um, to this type of solution. All right, so the last type of solution uh, the last use case I wanted to talk about um, is, of course, enterprise, which is which is probably going to be the primary use case that you're going to see. So when we talk about enterprise use cases, there's a lot of people in the space that have kiosks in corporate entrance ways, right? And the the question that we always talk about is, uh, in order to sort of sell these solutions, do they need to have sort of absolute access control? So um, these solutions. Um, uh, the, the, the one on the left and the one on the top do con actually control the door. So, however, the one on the, the bottom right, um, they, uh, that is just part of an entranceway and you have to stop, the doors open at all times and sort of just more employee tracking. 
So the, the way that I look at this market currently um, in terms of entranceway controllers, you know, with that added value of fe fever tracking effectively, uh, is that you sort of have two slants if you're an SIR a solution provider, right? You can either go and sort of really present your solution as being part of security, part of access control. Um, you're going to need a solution provider who can do that integration like 22 miles for you, um, which is one of the strengths of their system. They're able to be flexible and integrate with uh, any sort of door controller. So that's one way to go after it is really sort of approach these solutions as just being an extension of a security system, right? Or the access control system. And then the second way to look at these types of solutions is really about the whole smart building 2.0, employee tracking, um, all this sort of data gathering about your, your visitors and your employees and you know who's using what entrance. So the, the second way is much more analytical to look at, right? So, that's the that's the big question is what what is the best way to sell these types of solutions either as security access control devices or as sort of uh, analytic sort of devices that strictly control uh, and monitor fever and gather data about employees right so uh, typically on the employee tracking side you're going to have um, the facial recognition fever detection and then uh, the, the, the important thing that I, I didn't bring up yet is automatic logging. So at least in the APAC region, um, businesses are, uh, are responsible for reporting um, uh, the, the temperatures of employees, right? And uh, pointing out any anomalies, right? This isn't, it, it's not designed to target any, anyone, but once again, the normal way that you would have to do this is by using a non-contact forehead thermometer, right? And then you'd have to write down or put uh, the temperature in a computer and then you have to correlate that data and then you'd have to store it, right? So obviously a huge added value when you have a more robust type of system uh, solution in your office space is that it does that automatically. So once again, you can save time and add a lot of value over the de facto solution, which is just having a guy stand at every entranceway with a, um, with a non-contact forehead thermometer, right? We discussed that last time. It is slow, it's, it's pretty slow, but it's the cheapest way to do things. So, um, so yeah, these systems can just add a ton of value um, to your entranceway controller. The other interesting thing um, that we've talked about um, in terms of these solutions is the value of infrared, uh, sorry, the, the value of the infrared camera um, outside of fever detection, um, right? So one of the common things that a lot of the, uh, this particular solution uh, providers, uh, their clients brought up was that um, the, when you treat these systems as more access controllers, uh, one of the things that a lot of customers will say, well, is, well, what happens if, you know, someone goes and holds up a picture of, you know, you to the camera on one of these entrance controllers and then they can make it in. So obviously there's usually multiple layers of security. However, the infrared camera, if you do add it to your kiosk in some way, it can not only be used for fever detection, but it can be used um, for fake face detection, right? Fake face uh, is um, when you're trying to fool a system by holding up a printout or someone's ID to the camera so that it, uh, it triggers the facial uh, recognition. This obviously doesn't work um, with the, um, uh, when you have uh, infrared ver verification because a piece of paper doesn't have an infrared signature, right? So once again, <coughs> in addition to added value to adding an infrared camera to the devices in, and the general consensus that uh, we've been seeing is that, you know, the, the, the price of these infrared cameras and this type of technology will come down, down, down uh, because the applications are going to expand um, past uh, just straight fever detection, right? Um, the, the, the last thing, of course, once again, these are all corporate offices um, with people coming and going. Uh, corporate communication is obviously a key uh, aspect of these. Um, finally, last thing I wanted to mention is, of course, when you're working on things as sensitive as access controllers um, and uh, uh, systems dealing with facial recognition and employee tracking, uh, security is massively key. And that's one of the largest value adds 
of these types of um, higher quality, higher grade, more complex systems, right? I, I sort of call it the ring sy syndrome, right? You ring doorbell, it can do facial recognition, but it has to send pretty much all your data to the cloud um, to do any sort of processing. And having, you know, an i5 um, system, um, you know, right there in your, at your, your entranceway, doing all the, um, the processing, doing all the tracking, storing all the data locally so that it doesn't even have to leave your internet. Uh, that's a major value add for a lot of uh, customers as well. All right, so let's get into um, uh, the hardware and types of what AOPEN offers around these types of solutions. Um, so AOPEN is a hardware solution provider and uh, basically the way that we approach these um, types of solutions outside our, of our cameras are really the, <coughs> the three of our products, our e-tiles, d-tiles, and tablets, right? Um, so our e-tiles are just um, strict Windows, Linux, all-in-one devices, come in 15, 19, 22, they're commercial grade. Uh, they're primarily designed to be very tamper-proof, uh, locked down, designed for retail scenarios, stuff where you, you want to put stuff out in the open. Uh, you don't really want a lot of people futzing with it. Um, so that's a whole idea uh, between our e uh, around our e-tiles. Our detail line is, of course, just um, touch screens. We do have open frame options for our, uh, for our kiosk uh, partners. So if you're interest in those. We have a lot of different options, of course, um, for these particular uh, screens. So please ask if you don't see what you want, <laughs> the typical line, right? Uh, you can also see on the bottom left that we, <coughs> we don't make kiosks per se, and we just try and offer a lot of uh, stands that sort of offer base functionality to our, a lot of devices. And like I said, you know, uh, our e-tile devices are really easy to mount out in the open. They're very secure. You can lock them down. And so you can put them out in a retail environment with, uh, you know, the black floor stand uh, that you see below there. So they're uh, really easy to use, install, uh, and very secure. Um, last thing I want to mention is, of course, AOPEN has a lot of uh, sub 10 inch options. You know, you can call them tablets. It's not a great name because we have some battery powered devices and some uh, devices that are 10 inch that are more like uh, e-tiles that don't have batteries. So the bottom line is that we have a whole range, Android, Chrome, Windows. Uh, as you know, uh, as you may or may not know, AOPEN uh, <clears throat> is partnered with uh, Acer, right? They have a, a whole new great um, higher end uh, uh, ruggedized design called the Enduro product. Uh, they have a great new uh, Windows and Android tablet, and then that space that are great for bumps, bump screens and things like that. So, so yeah, AOPEN uh, and Acer really have a, just a whole bunch of options. A main thing to note, though, is that we, we really focus on uh, sub 24 inch screens. We're not really interested in all the, the, the crazy larger form factor kiosks. So we try, we try and keep in that, uh, that, that zone. Uh, so the, the way that we differentiate our products uh, aside from design, um, if you really want the whole rundown of the open value statement, please check out um, uh, IoT uh, value management. That was my last webinar. You can definitely get the whole um, rundown there. But in general, you know, uh, commercial devices, especially all-in-ones, you need to have better screens. Um, and of course, long-lasting devices, five-year runtime, all that lockdown, um, you know, uh, built-in uh, watchdog, completely fanless options, all that typical um, commercial stuff. And, and uh, AOPEN's primary value statement in this case of, is, of course, uh, that is really about reliability, right? These are devices that you're going to put and use as point of sales, use as, uh, use as kiosk, entrance kiosk, and if they break, it's just completely unacceptable these days and age. And, and so that's what, uh, that's the primary open value is it makes, it makes, uh, it reflects better on you as a solution provider, as a reseller, when uh, your the hardware that you use lasts a long time, performs well, um, and that's really what we do uh, strive at AOPEN. And we really bring that value. Um, you know, as I mentioned in my last webinar, I5 is an I5, but they AOPEN really strives to do a ton more QA steps, component level testing to really ensure that the reliability is there. So no corner cutting. Uh, last thing I wanted to mention uh, that we've been really uh, pushing with our uh, all-in-ones and our tablets uh, is a new partnership with Castus. It's a new type of antimicrobial uh, coating 
Um, so uh, the reason why the CAS is one is special, it's a new type of technology that's non-toxic um, as opposed to the embedded silver options. So we have a, if you're interested uh, in our screens or all in ones for your kiosk, uh, ask about this because we have overlay options and we also have uh, the embedded or centered options with the, the silver ions as well. So once again, we can use semi-custom changes these devices to suit, uh, uh, suit your needs and make your solution uh, as great as possible. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce um, Tomer from 22 Miles to talk about uh, his experience with these types of solutions. And a, a lot of, he's been finding a lot of great success. Um, 22 Miles has pretty much been, ever since I've joined AOPEN about four or five years, synonymous with um, high quality solutions, wayfinding, um, corporate communication, all sorts of uh, kiosks. So uh, really excited. Uh, thank you so much uh, for being here today, Tomer. Thank you. Thank you, Miles. Appreciate it. Um, let me uh, take over. And um, I think the best way to start um, is to really just do a video showing you guys the proof of concept re leveraging the AOPEN e-tile solution with um, a FLIR sensor and obviously our technology, uh, which is what we call Temp Defense Solutions. Um, so I'll shut up, let it um, the video do a little bit of the selling for me and we can go from there. The protection of employees and visitors during and post COVID-19 is essential. 22 Miles Temp Defend delivers temperature detection features with custom workflow as needed. It supports live view, thermal view, or LED view, depending on supported hardware and organizational preference. The system fully supports an interactive solution by voice activation of staff or visitors. It instructs the user to back away to four feet if they are too close, proximity protecting all visitors and providing additional safety measures for other users. Step closer to scan complete. Thank you. Step closer to four feet. Scan complete. Elevated temperature detected. To speak to someone remotely, say video call for assistance or please leave the building and call your manager remotely. When an elevated temperature occurs, Temp Defend incorporates preferred organizational workflow to handle the next step, such as print a pass or decline sticker, wristband, or send to mobile, as well as enable face mask suggestions or even a video call right on the spot. The system integrates with most employee management systems and access controls with facial recognition features. Organizations can upgrade to the 22 Miles virtual reception system to further protect front desk employees, creating a remote solution for social distancing. The application provides a more welcome experience while still providing safety measures for all employees. The system continues to display a visitor's temperature to help with the next actions to take for both staff and visitors. With upgraded protection as a service multi-user detection, 22 Miles offers open area temperature tracking options. This feature can sit on a reception desk, behind the counter, at security checkpoints, entrance gates, back office, receiving areas, and where all public access is allowed. The solution can alert based on group density or alert of any irregularity based on temperature. All of this technology is presently leveraging the 22 Miles AI-enabled sensor system. 22 Miles AI enabling of response customization, analytics, networking, and synchronizing of temp defend anomaly alerts, as well as compliance logs for legal audit trails are available as a customized AIoT solution in the industry. For more information on temp defend, visit us online at www.22miles.com. Perfect. Um, hopefully you, the audio work, it, it, um, gave you guys a good proof of concept of, of the total solution. Um, and we've got different offerings around that. Um, and um, I'll kind of go through this little deck to kind of explain that. But there's just a few points to make with this application. Um, and you can see there's the e-tile uh, solution right there, leveraging uh, the CPU, the Windows, um, and uh, the webcam that also comes built in with the e-tile that we really like. Um, so we wanted to create something 
Um, leveraging our existing CMS, we've been around since 2007 as a total digital signage solution. We've, we've done a lot with wayfinding, as Miles kind of alluded to, with a full platform um, and a lot of IoT or AIoT device activated solutions. So basically by March, we thought of the idea. By April, we fully developed the solution. Um, and by May, we already had it rolling out. And one of the main reasons was we wanted to have something that was safe uh, because we saw a lot in the industry of people doing temperature guns. Um, and we wanted to reduce that personal interaction um, to kind of keep staff members safe, um, keep operators away. Um, we don't want someone sneezing on someone. If someone's decided they don't wanna wear a mask, uh, there's, there's that safety and hygiene perspective. Um, we wanted to have something that was quick. As soon as someone walks, instantaneously the sensor can detect them with the webcam. Uh, we wanted to have it um, to obviously recognize their, their full body temperature um, and give results within seconds. Um, we have an accuracy based on our smart pathway, our smart algorithm, sorry, wayfinding is out pathway, but our, our algorithm and machine learning um, where we're looking at a 0.55 to 0.9 plus or minus. Um, and you can actually set the alarms at 99.5 or 100.4, whatever you guys want is um, some of the customizations built in leveraging the CMS application that we have. Um, and again, we wanted to also create a template that was very welcoming um, and provides auditory and text. Um, you can change, let's say maybe the the, we added the CDC component, so you can change the digital signage or infotainment if you wanted to. Um, and everything could then be emailed or um, accessed um, by phone or to reference to call supervisor, or we can email the supervisor or HR. Um, and that's the basic unit. That's the facial view, the pass fail. Um, that's the simplified solution. Um, and also it's a flat fee as, as a reference from a pricing perspective. Then we go into our premium solution, what we call protection as a service or pass, um, where now we can reference voice commands, um, video call, um, web call capabilities on an elevated temperature. So again, it's a contactless experience. No one has to touch the screen. No one has to, um, again, hopefully avoid any, um, any, any elevated um, persons or anything like that before them. Um, and you can customize the design on the board, a portrait and landscape. Um, and so even this message, um, we can, we can um, allow you to edit or we can help you edit that component. One of the new features we've added now that we're getting a lot of command um, and requests for is adding common screening questions, some CDC questions. Um, and so we've, we've done it again, leveraging our voice command so you don't have to uh, touch anything. Um, and basically have you experienced the following symptoms? Um, have you been around anyone? Um, have you traveled outside the US? And if any of those are yes, um, then obviously we won't get them to the screening part. We'll immediately say that they're an elevated um, or high risk and um, HR or admins or whomever is allocated uh, immediately can get an email alert um, based on those questions. Um, and then the other option is the receptionist, which would be more for visitors. Um, and you can put this at the, the lobby or anything like that. And there is the visitor view, which again is customizable. And then the computer view of the admin where they can actually get the temperature and all of those components. So again, we've got different offerings available. Um, and again, all leveraging the e-tile solution. Um, so it's easy to install. Um, it's an all-in-one application. Um, we've got a lot of kiosk uh, manufacturing partners as well. So the solution um, from the display can be housed in other dis um, stands that have a badge reader, that have a printing capability, um, and they all are leveraging our one software and sensor solution. So again, we've got the, the basic option. We've got the premium or pass solution, which now allows you to customize the branding. It gives you an online software solution with a voice command and web call solution capabilities. And then you've got the receptionist, which now has the video receptionist. Within the past, 
and the receptionist, we can add the access controls, which is a nice differentiator where we can integrate with just about any ID badge system, um, HID badges, whatever it is. Um, we can incorporate facial recognition. Um, we can recognize through let's a simplify a photo album of high resolution photos. We can do screen captures. These are all almost kind of a la carte extras. If someone doesn't want facial recognition, you don't have to enable that feature. Um, we can obviously add the questions. Uh, we can integrate with just about any API um, within the receptionist or the pass solution. Um, and that's basically uh, a gist of the offerings and you can find everything at 22miles.com temp defend where we kind of made it more of a resource page so you've got a little bit of the bullets um, you've got the video right there um, and you've got the different packages with a full comparison chart to kind of let you know what's going on and even some common questions and more advanced questions that you can download. So this one sub page really kind of gives you a little of everything uh, to look at um, to leverage the eTile and 22 miles collaboration. Um, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, Miles, I'll, I'll kind of let you kind of take over again um, and hopefully I can help answer any questions on this solution um, and happy to, to get engaged with anyone. Here we go. Thanks. Good. <laughs> thanks, Tomer. All right. So um, uh, thank you for covering that. So let's, uh, let's continue and just uh, start to wrap things up. Um, you know, just to, first off, I found it really interesting uh, what you said, Tomer, about um, adding those questions. Uh, I think it's interesting that could, that could be a larger part, trying to get a, all that additional information, uh, the CDC questions and the screening questions as, as people use these kiosks as well. Yeah, we're getting that asked all the time. So we felt that it was, it was something that was uh, needed to be done right away. So literally we created the, the workflow and uh, we should have it live um, by next week. Uh, another thing that people started asking us about is uh, face mask detection as well. So by the end of this week, um, we're adding that enhancement. We already had it kind of um, leveraging to understand someone's wearing it, but now we'll actually um, say that it's being detected or if someone's not wearing it, we'll notify them that we recommend them wearing it is kind of the enhancement. So we're getting a lot of people asking for those. So that's, again, the benefit with 22 miles is that we've got our in-house developers that as soon as we're getting this feedback or in the market, um, we're on the street kind of information, we're able to immediately put our resources and our heads together to create these um, enhancements and, and advancements within this temp defense solution. Um, so it's, it, it's a nice collaboration between what's out there and what's being requested and what we can easily leverage within our platform, our CMS and development team. Yeah, the, the, the mass detection, uh, I think, is going to be really valuable as, as people move towards it being uh, much more of a standard. Uh, the other uh, interesting types that I don't know are, are if they're going to take off in the United States uh, as well is, is also the social distancing monitoring systems, right? Um, these are the systems that sort of monitor if people are maintaining. Uh, density yeah. controls, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the other one that I actually saw um, from a solution provider was, um, you know, uh, uh, in hospitals, they were actually monitoring how often people uh, wash their hands in the patient's rooms and things like that. Um, I thought that was interesting. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see how, how far these solutions actually go in terms of uh, what they're tracking and things like that. I figure they're eventually going to be listening for sneezes and coughs, you know, and be like, oh, well, 500 people coughed in your office today, <laughs> right? Or so, stuff like that. So, um, all right, so let, let's start to uh, wrap things up um, uh, for this webinar. Um, so uh, key takeaways, uh, uh, of course, uh, AOPEN, hardware solution provider, we have all-in-ones, uh, we have um, <clears throat> open frame touchscreen devices, we have tablets, all sorts of platforms, uh, cross-platform solutions, Windows, Linux, Chrome, Android, uh, that can be used in these type of solutions. Uh, and what we really focus on is of course uh, reliability. And, and the other thing to bring up um, about uh, these type of uh, uh, 
uh, uh, the services provided by AOPEN is we also try to make things easier for our kiosk and solution providers by doing a lot of the prep work on the devices too. So you can have the device show up uh, completely white gloved, loaded with a Windows image, some configurations changed, uh, lots of setup features. So uh, we really try to make it uh, as easy as possible to use our devices in your solution. Um, of course, what we talked about today, primary point um, is all those value adds that uh, you know I talked about with our use cases uh, and that all those that Tomer brought up, all that additional information you're gathering, uh, all the added security, the, the, the uh, uh, ability to integrate with access control. This is what these types of kiosks really need to do. Corporate communication, facial recognition, all these things uh, are the value adds um, that these types of solutions uh, you know, need to really get traction um, in the United States. So uh, I hope you learned something about that today. Um, and of course, uh, the, the, the last thing, uh, we offer a wide, wide range of mounts. We have that new camera um, to sort of work with our kiosk partners if you're looking for other options. Um, one of the other things that we can note about our mounts and our devices is that AOPEN does strive to be a primarily Taiwanese uh, manufactured. Uh, that's where our headquarters are. And so uh, most of our products are manufactured strictly in Taiwan. Uh, one of the things Tomer mentioned as well is that his uh, is a strictly um, U.S. developed uh, solution as well. They're of course using our uh, Taiwanese products, which is another thing that your, your customers may uh, ask about. So that's another value add uh, of working with us as well. In addition, we're always happy to represent our hardware to your end customers as well. Um, and, and to that point, we offer a wide range of semi-custom stands, mounts, um, just for something basic if that's what your customers are looking. And you saw the render, we can add, you know, we can make uh, camera enclosures for you. Um, and things like that if you want brackets and things like that for any one of our camera products or our e -tile products. So, all right, I think that's all I really wanted to cover today. So, um, Chris, you wanna close it up? Excellent, it looks like we are all wrapped up for questions. If anyone else has any other additional questions, please feel free to email us at info at aopen.com. Um, we'll be able to reach out and answer those at any time. Um, but otherwise, it looks like we are at the end of our presentation here. I want to thank everybody for coming. And just as a reminder, besides the questions, the deck and this webinar are being recorded. So we will be sure to share these out. Um, please feel free to share out the decks with um, anyone. Uh, customers or um, end users, how, however you see best fit, uh, reach out to us and we're more than happy to also jump on any calls to either present the solution or help engineer the solution. So uh, once again, you can just reach out to us there at the info at aopen.com. And we thank you for participating in today's webinar and hope to see you again next time.